Hello and welcome to part one with Kafka Made Simple with AMQ Streams. So if you're new to Kafka today, you're in luck. We're going to talk about what it is, why would you use it, when would you use it, and how does it work. And then we're going to look at a product called AMQ Streams. I'm going to look at a bit of a demo of how you can, uh, how it makes it very easy to install Kafka on top of Kubernetes and OpenShift. So Kafka, what is it? Kafka is a distributed simple system designed for streams. It's designed to be horizontally scalable, it's fault tolerant, allows distributed data streams and stream processing applications. And if you're familiar with event-driven design, Kafka is perfect to be that event broker. It was developed at LinkedIn and back in 2010 and open source in 2011. But it's really an ecosystem rather than a single project, which we'll see in further parts um, beyond this. But today we're going to talk about really that Kafka broker, the, the key central part. It handles a huge number of consumers with a high throughput and a low latency. It's a fast, Kafka is a fast and simple transaction model. It appends only to the logs of events as it as it comes in, so in a time series, and this allows more options to process. Kafka scales work by having smart clients who know the offset they're going to read and sort of dumb brokers, so they can work extremely fast. So this is sort of different to a traditional message broker or JMS broker where typically the broker is smart, it understands what transactions the consumers have read, and, and the client is more dumb, so it just reads that next message of the queue. Kafka under the hood has four key functions, publish and subscribe, which is generally understood if you use other message-oriented middleware like you know, IBM MQ series, JMS, ActiveMQ. However, the designer's Kafka is more like a distributed database transaction log than a traditional sort of messaging system. The second thing is Kafka's you know, ability to store streams in a fault-tolerant storage with sort of transactional properties, and it, those streams can be queried. So, is it a database? Could it replace my database? In general, no, but in some cases, storing events in the database would not, would, would sort of maybe be redundant in your design. Kafka is a very useful in integration with microservices, and it's a key reference architecture today. But the, the fourth uh, function there, process streams, is probably the main idea behind Kafka, and it's to continually process that streaming data with additional options to, to query that stored data. So why Kafka? Are there alternatives to achieving the same outcome of building systems? Yes, however, what would highlight about Kafka is it's cost effective. You know, you do not need special hardware. It's designed for horizontal scalability. You can have cluster sizes from a few brokers up to thousands of brokers. So you can scale it with your business or with, with your service. And you can have different approaches. You can have one big cluster or you have several small clusters. And finally, you know, scaling has minimal impact on performance, throughput, and latency. So you can really um, scale it up and you don't have to be concerned about the underlying, you know, whether you have to vertically scale like, like other brokers that you may have had to or, or reinvest more. So how does it work? You know, as with any application running at scale, Kafka requires a significant amount of preparation and customization on the network, hardware, OS, and application level. Kafka's performance and stability depends heavily on RAM capacity, so disk throughput, file system tuning, and, and network latency. It also you know, currently relies on Apache Zookeeper, which you'll need to deploy separately from Kafka uh, to avoid a point, single point of failure. The limitations is also its greatest weakness, scalability. You know, as the number of publishers and subscribers grow, so does that complexity and overhead of deploying and maintaining a Kafka instance. So when would you use Kafka and when wouldn't you use Kafka? Well, you use Kafka, definitely you can replace traditional message brokers. However, legacy transaction requirements. If you need that transaction to be transaction aware, Kafka is not gonna be a substitute for that. You might have to rework your, your, uh, your clients in that instance. Definitely a good one for stream processing. You can uh, rewind re uh, and replay those events. I could replay what happened in production. Perfect. Uh, if you're thinking of large files, you know, this is not usually, Kafka's not really designed for large files, and there's a good article there, which I recommend you go and read and, and understand, um, you know, what you could do with large files with Kafka. Event sourcing, and, and that 
plays back to, you know, do you need a database? Can I maintain that state and memory and rely on my Kafka topic to maintain all those changes and rebuild that state whenever I, I need to? But if you're thinking about low volumes of messaging, Kafka may not um, be enough, offer enough value to you. So you might be uh, after a simpler sort of message broker design and Kafka might be a bit overkill. The examples they, they go with uh, with Kafka is like website activity tracking, log aggregation, metrics, you know, like web scale, microservice communication. If you need messages process in order, uh, with Kafka you sort of need to add that one consumer and one petition. And this is, you know, typically that's not the way Kafka works, but you, you can manage to work it that way. You know, we heard some of the operational challenges. What if you really could automate and de-risk this ability to run Kafka on OpenShift? And uh, Kafka, Red, AMQ Streams um, and Red Hat OpenShift Pro has brought the ability to codify those operational aspects of Kafka in a standardized form on Kubernetes. And they not only install, they can help to upgrade Kafka in place, they can help to configuring, they can help with that fine tuning, the repetitioning and step. So Streamsy is this open source Kafka operator with Red Hat supports and it provides a way to run Apache Kafka on a Kubernetes in various deployment configurations. Streamsy was accepted into CNCF CNCF Sandbox in August 2019. So let's have a look at a quick demo and see how it works. So here we're going to log into OpenShift. And what we're going to do is look for the AMQ streams operator. So let's find it in, in the operator hub, which is a marketplace operator hub.io, which has a lot of operators for OpenShift. So with the AMQ streams, we can find that and we can see it's got various capability levels and we're going to install that AMQ streams operator. We're going to install it into our whole cluster. So all namespaces will be able to access that operator. So that operator takes a, a few minutes to install, but we fast forwarded and let's view it. Now we've got this operator within our project. I can now um, create a project where I'm going to install my Kafka instance. Having created that project Kafka instance, I can now go to my installed operators and see the AMQ streams operator. I now can click on Kafka to create a Kafka instance. It's got various configuration levels. I can simply accept the defaults for a development environment, click ready, uh, click install, and it's up and running. And you can see pods are starting to come up with my Kafka cluster and Zookeeper clusters there. So you've seen the demo of the AMQ Streams operator working in OpenShift. Now, wouldn't it be great to have your own Kafka cluster as a developer? I can spin it up in a few minutes, just like you saw there. Well, that's what AMQ Streams is about. You can spin up as many Kafka clusters as you like. But beyond that basic install, once you have that production size Kafka, you can do those seamless upgrades. You can look at that full life cycle. You can look at deep insights to actually fine tune those Kafka. Our mission at Red Hat is to make, make it simple with AMQ Streams, and this really talks to easy scalability. How do I easily scale? With Kubernetes and pods in that architecture, you can easily scale up those pods. That operator can easily hand you, handle the Zookeeper and, and the Kafka broker nodes and, and all the other uh, attributes in the Kafka ecosystem very easily. Ease of management. With the operator, all I have to do is add a bit of YAML. Instantly it spins up, you know, infrastructure as code is the way forward and AMQ Streams gives that to Kafka. It's automated. Uh, I can start to automate uh, what that operator does. I can start to really uh, get those teams. If I've got a team or a need to enable them with the Kafka instance, very easy to provide self-service. And it's secure. I mean, with the OpenShift Stack platform, having that AMQ Streams, uh, we certify and test our images as we go forth and we, we always understand uh, what's in our image. So you've got that container provenance from your uh, Red Hat registry. So you can easily understand, is there any vulnerabilities in my packages? How do I ensure my security of my Kafka? All done for you in OpenShift. So thank you for your time today and good luck with AMK Streams and Kafka Made Simple.